I just want to start off with my upbringing before when I was on this. I was brought up in a house with my mother, like a semi pregnancy Christian, and my father, an atheist. So, with that, obviously, we were, I've got four sisters and my brother, my brother and mommy. We did that, and then I was very, like, I was very confused, like, what moral should I, you know, go to church and become Christian or go down the path my father's gone down? Science and stuff. I went to a, I went to prim, all the primary schools at my schools I went to, they were um, Catholic schools. So I started off at St. Francis Xavier in Ballarat as a Catholic school. And then I went to, I moved to an all boys Catholic, um, for high school, I moved to an all boys Catholic school. There we had, within the curriculum, um, we had to study the Bible, you know, all the stories and things like that. Um, well, growing up too, I was also taken to Sunday school, and I sort of found myself, I wasn't really convinced with Christianity, the way it was brought forward to me, the way, um, the contradictions I would see reading the Bible, you know, you, you read the first 20 pages and you definitely see like, the contradictions in there, things that don't make sense. Anyway, I became... After year eight, I got kicked out of this all-boys Catholic school due to bad behaviour. I was very unhappy. I was drinking. I was on drugs. I was on pills. Like speed. Any drug name, I took it. With that came a lot of them, um, depression and anxiety. Um, I started, my parents started taking me to psychiatrists, psychologists. I saw lots of them. Uh, they, cost, they costed my parents a lot of money. They tried me on all sorts of prescription drugs. None of it had an effect on me. It not just made me worse. Um, the relationships that I had with people were, I had no moral code, like I lived around no mo- um, the principles of my morals, so I was very horrible to people, I wasn't, I couldn't maintain really good friendships and things like that. I had friends, but, you know, they weren't good friends. Um, I was going out, I was going out clubbing, I was, doing, I was gambling as well. I was, you know, stealing cars, I went into, into the trouble with the police a lot. And then, as I said, you know, horrible to my family, disrespectful and no manners. I, you know, to sum that all up, I was lost. Um, I was very, very unhappy. Anyway, when, and through this time, I went through a lot of different suicide attempts as well. Like I've tried over, I reckon I've tried over 20 times to kill myself. One stage I was in hospital, I was in intensive care for two weeks, hooked up to a life support machine um, f- from taking a, um, an overdose of prescription pills the doctors had given me to help me. And I tried to hang, hang myself. When I was 15, I, put, I grew up on a farm. I put a, so we had hunting rifles there, I put a 22 to my head. Safety was, 22 is a, you know, safety off anyone who has anything they want. Um, and I was laying on my bed anyway, and I was 15, sort of how I'm standing. I was there, I, I took all the guns out of the gun safe, so I had the shotgun, all the rifles, and stuff, I loaded them all up, and I put them all on my bed. Um, and yeah, I was just laying there, and eventually my old man came and saw the gun, and chased me around the house with it, and, you know, grabbed it off me up a little bit. Anyway, after, with the depression and anxiety and stuff like that, this is where I began to start searching um, for, you know, the meaning of life. Like, I started going to churches and things like that. I remember I was with Tyler at the time when I worked in this reborn Christian guy. This guy was absolutely crazy. He said, come to church. I'm like, all right. I went to this reborn Christian church, Tyler, uh, this place. I reckon the people, were, they're all possessed by Jesus. They are just nuts. Like, you know, if you want to go for a while, go this. Go down to Sunday, go find a reborn Christian church and go listen to them. Um, so I went there three times and I sort of sat at the back and seen how they you know, worship and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, this is, this can't be the truth. Just, it can't be. This is just a joke. This is a circus. So I walked out and I was sort of gave up on religion for a while. Um, I started, I moved, I remember I moved to Greenvale in the northern side, like in the northern side, it's the first time we lived in the northern side, at the start of last year. And I started like, I was still at a, a time where I was depressed, I was anxious, um, 
I was climbing, I was still drinking, blah, blah, blah. And I started, I remember one night, I'd cut my wrist, I was um, quite violently, and I was in Essendon, this was very, very late at night. Um, and I was walking down the street, the, you know, the cuts were very bad, and I walked into the service station, and that night, I would say from there, that's the night um, one of my life, my life had changed, my life. I was talking to a brother in there, who was in the Sabal Youth from Pakistan. This brother wasn't even practicing. Um, he'd seen my arms, he, you know, he'd said, he started giving me doubt about his name. And I remember leaving that conversation. I wasn't running off to a mosque, but I remember, I won't forget what he said to me. He was saying to me, he's like, we have to struggle in this life, so we're going to struggle in the next. And how true that statement is. So I left that. The, the service station, feeling pretty good about it, but not wearing off to a mosque anyway. A week later, I ended up in hospital for another suicide attempt. I met a Lebanese brother in there, and I remember talking to him. I had more questions about the same as, because I just, you know, be scared. I tried to kill myself again, so I'm, I met this Lebanese brother in there, and I asked him about the women and the sisters. I'm like, you know, why do they cover up? I'll never forget what he said to me. He's like, it's not that we disrespect our women, it's because we respect our women so much. I, you know, I was very, very taken back. And before this, I'm thinking about the Muslim sisters I had. I used to get scared. If I seen up in the car, I'm like, I just walk the other way. Remember one day I was walking down the street, I saw a brother in a bow, my sister was in the car, one of I crossed the street, I was scared. But, so from there, I remember I went to Aussie players. And I, to IGA, I knew they were Muslims, I seen the big beards now, I said, look, is there a number, can you please give me an address of a mosque? Um, there's a brother in there, blah, 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 they all started speaking in Arabic around me, anyway, sister came up to me, she said, look, I'll give you a number, um, and I'll get someone to call you. So she gave, she, sorry, she asked my number and said, I'll get someone to call you. And my little water. I, from there, I remember she came to pick me up, she's older sister, with her two brothers, um, and then they took me to HLYC. Yeah. I remember the, I had a six pack in the fridge, the place I was living at the time. So I came here, I had walked into the mosque with the two brothers. We sat down, um, I was talking to some brothers here for about three hours. Some of just like, throwing all sorts of questions at them. Um, I don't know what we were and I remember, anyway, after that, that they took me, they showed me around this um, center and stuff like that, and they took me here. You know, it was right over there. They said, you know, do you want to become Muslim? I said, yeah, I was like, I was convinced. I can't, the conversations and stuff we had, I can't remember clearly. So, you know, what's all here. So I took my shahada right over there, and then I hung around my life from there, the ups and downs, but it's been, I would say, like, from, when I, you know, when I think about it, it's, it's, yeah, like exactly the darkness of the light. But there I was in a situation trying to kill myself, trying to like, go through like really crazy things. Being sent to like psychiatrists. My parents, when I was younger, I was like, they were sending me to psychiatrists that cost like over like, like two hundred dollars a session to see these people for an hour of their time. Like one psychiatrist cost five hundred dollars to um and it did nothing. So from there my life it started it started changing heaps. You know. I remember from there I started hanging out at HLIC a lot and um, and to start gaining knowledge and things like that. From that, I went I remember that after that time I went back home and I bought that six pack you know, and said I'll never want to drink again from there. From there I I was walking around with this just this beautiful peace that I never ever felt before. I was so lost, I was so upset, um, I had depression, anxiety, and you know, other than just giving me this this peace. I can't I can't describe it to you. I could, there's no words to describe this. But if you had told me my whole family had died with that peace wouldn't have affected me, because that's how how beautiful it was. I was just so calm, so chilled out, you know, very rational. I was talking to my mother the other day. And I said to her, I called her up and I said, look, they're not Muslims. Um, but I said to her, look, honestly, have you seen any changes in me? If there's been changes, you know, don't say it, don't say anything, just changes 
positive one they did tell me, um, and she said there's been no negative changes. She said you've become given more of the alcohol to my parents before it's there. My, I changed. She, this is what she said. She said you become. It seems like you're more fulfilled. You're more respectful. You're more rational. You're more stable. You're um, a lot better to us. And at the start, there was lots of arguments. You couldn't see this. We used to like, have it out all the time, my whole family. And then slowly, but she, you know, she knew when it. And then one of the, I was surprised because I wasn't thinking that she was going to say nothing at all. But you haven't become worse, but you know, it's not supposed to change your world. But she said this, and I humbled her better. Anyway, it was um, pretty short, but that's my story to my recount of how I've come to this land. Thank you for listening to my work. Thank you for all of you. Thank you for all of you.